So it's about time I make an update video and drive and everything with my 87 Ares Shelby Z turbo intercooled rocket ship. You know, my redneck race wagon. And I also love John Deere's, so thanks Mike Silver from Alexandria, Washington. Sweet. Well, if you've been watching David's farm for more than two years, you know the last time I had it licensed on the road was the summer and fall of 1998. And if you were watching back then too, you knew that I had it hanging from the ceiling of my building for seven years. It was hanging right in front of those further back flags from those steel beams on the roof that I built. Up there about the height of the bottom of that white one, that's where the height of the floor was in the car. And I just picked it all up and hung it there with that two-ton chain hoist. And it was hanging by the rope that you can still see hanging there. Reason being, I put that car together in May of 1991 and the engine has no emission controls on it and in 2000 or 2001 or something in this area everybody had to have their car emissions tested and I never even bothered taking it in for a test even though I was currently driving it because it wouldn't have passed it would have failed the visual test seeing that it had uh, no catalytic converter no exhaust recirculation valve and nothing else that has to do with emissions it's all a race motor now it's a race motor for a cheap guy like me, it gets 37 miles per imperial gallon, or the Canadian gallon, on the highway, and 27 miles per gallon in the city. So it's actually reasonably fuel efficient for something that has a full output of 230 horsepower and a momentary output of 260 horsepower by my delayed, by my delayed wastegate control. So for all the guys who haven't been watching me for a long time, I'm going to just sort of rehash what I did to this sleeper car, this grocery getter. She's sort of all dusty now. Well, first of all, I had to put a 5-speed in it. Who wants to drive an automatic race car? And the 5-speed tranny it's got is the Getrag, made in Germany, you know, transmission for Chrysler, sort of the race model, the A555 model, which are good for like about 350 horsepower with no mods before they blow up. The engine started out as a stock 88 Daytona Shelby Z Turbo 2. That's the first year the intercooled higher output 2.2 came out that was supposed to have 175 horsepower stock, 175 foot-pounds torque. So here's the story. Well, I used to be a high output garbage picker. I, this is how I made my living and how I was able to afford my lifestyle now and be retired and be a YouTube star. I wanted to garbage pick because that's what I was good at fixing everything and I made a lot of money doing it and there was lots of competition there was always about 75 other pickers to compete against and so I needed a wagon and I have a trailer hitch so I often pulled a trailer so I could put my fridges and washing machines and air conditioners and lawnmowers and dehumidifiers in there that I fixed and sold and I needed the edge on the competition so I needed like the fastest car to compete with one that I could just step on the gas and pass another picker and it would lay two black patches all the way around them just by stepping on the gas in second gear. It was awesome. It would scare the shit out of them. So reading in all the auto magazines at the time, this was the most awesome engine Chrysler had produced in like 15 or 20 years. Of course we're talking 1988. And it had horsepower output of, you know, over a horsepower per cubic inch. So that was pretty good. So of course the wheels in my brain get turning after reading about these cars and seeing them testing these things like the Daytonas and the Elm and, and the Omni GLHSs against Mustangs and other fast cars and seeing how fast they were in stock form. So I was dying to try to find the first wrecked one and I did get the very first wrecked one in my area of southern Ontario in London and I got it in May I think of 1989. So was, the car was just one year old, had 40,000 kilometers, and it was a rollover red Daytona. Well, it was sitting in the insurance hold compound, and I went and asked about it, and they actually looked it up on the computer and said, oh, it's actually been released. We can actually part it out now. And I said, well, how much for the drivetrain? It's turbo. I mean, the axles, the gas tank, the, all the electronics, the engine, the transmission, the shifter mechanism, everything that I could use to make this thing work in an Aries wagon since they 
sort of fit an Aries wagon, but I had to rewire the whole car. Well, they had no idea what kind of engine they had. They just thought it was the old-fashioned Turbo 1. They hadn't even heard of the Turbo 2 yet, so they said 1500 bucks for a one-year-old motor and all the stuff with it, like I just mentioned. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a deal, so I took it. So, 24 hours later, it was in my car and working. I had to rewire the whole car, everything. The only wires in the car that are original are the taillight wires. So I had to rip out the dash, stuff a whole new harness behind it, modify all the ends and connectors to fit existing switches on my dash, and I cut out my instrument cluster area from the original Aries cluster and put the Daytona cluster in. I put the intercooler over there beside the radiator. I had to tilt the radiator a little bit to make it fit and move it over this way four inches to give room for the intercooler. The motor mounts on all three were just the same for a regular 2.2. So the motor pretty much just bolted in. It's just that everything else was kind of different and I had to strengthen the rad cradle and strengthen a few things, even strengthen the motor mounts. Let me tell you, it sure was fast and I beat the shit out of it for years garbage picking and taking it to track racing and having lots of fun with it and it never gave me a trouble. These engines come with uh, hyper eutectic piston stock now it's got forged in it. It's been rebuilt since then. A steel crankshaft, uh, special connecting rods, uh, a special camshaft, high volume oil pump, uh, so on and so on. And now it's got more than that too. It's got the high flow injectors, a race computer, heavy duty clutch, uh, and some redneck modifications which I'll show you in a minute. So instead of being the stock 175 horsepower like it was for the first few years I drove it, now it's 230 constant output when you're stepping on it, but it peaks at 260 for two seconds because of my wastegate delay system I have on it. Oh yeah, I've also got the Direct Connection Special two-piece intake manifold with the long runners for much better torque. So the first mod I made is if you look closely you'll see two motorcycle radiator fans making forced air cooling on my intercooler so it always gets lots of air at any amount of boost over one PSI even if you don't have a lot of speed. This is a washing machine fill switch where you turn your knob and adjust the level of the water in your washing machine. Well I hooked that up to control my fans and there's the vacuum and pressure hose that it's set for one PSI so anytime there's a the tiniest amount of boost it just turns my intercooler fans on. Next is this Whirlpool fridge or English fridge thermostat. Well, they, all thermostats have like a sensor tube on it. I cut the sensor tube off, let the Freon out, and added a little vacuum step-up hose, and readjusted its adjustment parameters by that little Allen screw. And now I can adjust and dial in when my wastegate even turns on. So the way I have it set is that the car drives all the time with no wastegate. So every time you hit the gas, there's no delay in boost like or hardly any and it goes all the way to full pressure like instantaneously without slowly opening the wastegate like other turbo cars and then when it gets to 17 pounds boost it holds 17 pounds boost for two seconds and then it activates the wastegate and, and then holds it at 14 and a half pounds boost I could set it higher but I don't want to run higher than 92 octane fuel in it but nowadays 20 years later that doesn't seem like a lot of horsepower but back in the days when I built this car in 89 it was a hell of a lot of horsepower this car would beat those most common hot rods on the road those Mustang GTs with the 225 horsepower 5 liter engines with the 5 speed transmission it got to the point where anybody who had a stock Mustang GT they wouldn't even race me because they didn't want the stories going around that their ass got kicked by a 4 cylinder 2.2 Aries station wagon it was funny. Then came along those 195 horsepower all-wheel drive Ego Turbo Talons in the early 90s. Well it kicked their asses too except on t standing starts they had all-wheel drive and so I couldn't beat them because with my tire spin but as soon as I shifted to second gear and we were both hooking up good I would blow right past them they could never catch me. I used to take this thing to King of the Hills at the Oval Track and I never won a King of the Hill but I would always come in second and third place against all the other local fastest streetcars. 
So let's fire her up. She's a cold start. She's been sitting for a while. But probably fine. This car has been so dependable. There's my boost gauge. I just had to cut out the gas dash for that. Always starts the same. Alternator belt squeaking a bit. This has been sitting for a while. Put it in neutral. And we'll let her warm up before we try to drive her because you don't want to give a car hyper boost on a cold engine. It's got a very, very low restriction exhaust, so it's running on high idle, and that's what it sounds like. Well, we'll just let her warm up, and I'll be back in a few minutes.